You're listening to The Starting Zone, a podcast about World of Warcraft and the people who play it. And now, here are your hosts. Well, hello and welcome to The Starting Zone, the podcast about World of Warcraft and people who play it. Today is April 1st, 2024, and my name is Spencer Downey. Thank you so much for listening and subscribing to the podcast. I'm joined as always, by my co-host, Jason Lucas. Jason, how are you doing on this April of 1st? Uh, Spencer, hello. Uh, g- uh, good afternoon. It certainly feels like a Monday for me. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's April 1st. I feel like, you know, uh, we got some April Fool's jokes floating around the WoW sphere this morning. I haven't had time to look at any of them, but I'm kind of not in the mood anymore. <laughs> I don't think uh, I don't know. I, I mean, I, I'm sure the fake patch notes are funny and all, but you know, I feel like as a as a community, we've moved past the need for for this. Which is personally, um, I do miss the days when I used to make little flash games, and they'd, they'd yeah. be like there'd be like a joke flash game out for for April first. That was kind of cool, but yeah, uh, yeah I don't know. Um, I, I guess uh, just be, beware. Just everybody be safe out there with your <laughs> with you your know, with, with your interneting today. Yeah, I I will say that I'll probably um, read the patch notes through someone's stream. I'll probably go to Ted's or Josh's or someone's stream, so Salute or Devo's, um, and watch them go through the patch notes because I think it'll be much more entertaining to do it with someone else than just on my own. I, I just, I'll just find it more interesting to do that, so... Yeah. Um, also, Josh used to write a lot of them, right? So, like, that should be—it yeah. should be funny to watch him read ones that he didn't have anything to do with. Exactly. That's what he's doing this week. So, yeah, I don't know. I mean, the team usually puts some some pretty good jokes in there, so it's you know it's cool. But I think you know, just culturally, we're all kind of exhausted from the you know internet April first prank show. Well, I was saying this morning inside of our Discord channel for our listeners out there because I I wanted to report it here live as well on the show. Uh, there was an announcement though today that is not an April Fool's joke. Google is, in fact, shutting down their Google Podcast stuff, which you've probably received an alert for or an email for or something about from them. They are migrating all of their Google Podcasts over to uh, YouTube Music. And so they're basically saying, hey, we're, we're out of the podcast business. YouTube Music's going to handle it now. So if you're someone who listened through uh, Google Podcasts, be sure you are saving your playlists or migrating your playlists so that you're not waking up. Uh, I think it's tomorrow or on the fourth it's it's very soon uh and being like hey where did all my podcast go and how do I, the app doesn't work anymore and i what podcast was i listening to i don't remember and like just be sure you get all that stuff in there so that you can uh be sure your your you your tsz goes uninterrupted with what you're trying to do listening wise it's so weird google you know sunsetting or rebranding a product i mean it's pretty unprecedented so um <laughs> <laughs> right like yeah any, anyway yeah a good uh good heads up there because yeah I, I you know there's a lot of different ways to get podcasts and there's i guess there's gonna be one fewer as of this week so exactly just keep yeah. that in mind yeah all right what did you get up to this past week in world of warcraft oh man uh you know it's, it was another light week i would say um we sort of have dropped the normal farak farm i think entirely because pretty much everybody has an axe that cares to mm-hmm. I think even I think everybody who shows up regularly is even pretty caught up on like trinkets and rare drops from Farrakh on normal difficulty track. So we didn't do that, uh, which means we had plenty of time for heroic. Uh, we had a decently healthy group um, starting to get some people back in a little bit, but not quite enough for mythic. We did the skip. We did we did like the unlock to uh, smolder on so that we could go do Farrakh early and then go back through and clean up, uh, which I think worked a bit better. Uh, just, you know, keeping everybody fresh and keeping their heads in the game instead of trying to squeeze in the kill at the end of the night. Farak was such an easy reclear for us for so long, but we've just had so much brain drain. Uh, it's helped getting a couple really solid healers back in the group. That helps tremendously on on uh, heroic Farak. So that was nice. That was my only night really of playing like multiplayer. Wow, did a key. Uh, I forget what we even did. Uh, I think it was some some flavor of a tall desire, like a twenty two ish tall desire. It was, you know, not like an amazing week to slam keys and nobody was really in the mood to do any more. Um, I didn't, nobody hit me up like, hey, let's get some keys in. I need to get caught up or I need to get something done this week. So that was really it. You know, beyond that, I, I, I've been playing my daily Plunderstorm matches because I want the rewards. It's, it's kind of dumb, but I, I don't know. I, I, 
I really don't like the mode. Like, it's just not what I want to be doing with my WoW time. I've sort of come to grips with, you know, what is being asked of me, at least. Like, uh, they all, they made some changes this week that we'll talk about, too, which were great. So that helps a lot. And so I kind of get in there, and I get about, like, two games in, and I get out, man. You know, uh, sometimes three games. Sometimes I'll, you know, my, my goal is basically, okay, at bare minimum, I'm going to get my 800 plunder daily done right like that's happening no matter what even if i'm not really going to sit down and play if i have a little bit of time and i feel like playing then my my ceiling is like two renowned ranks and if, you know once i get two ranks it's like okay i'm done for today and that's plenty and um with the you know they they buffed um how much how much plunder you get at this point and so really it's not a huge investment of games which is okay it's it's, I don't know. It's still not like what I really want to be doing. I don't particularly like the mode on its own merits and I would rather be playing my wow character, but the rewards are really cool. And there's something that I want to have on my account in perpetuity. I feel like they're, you know, slowly, but surely kind of paving down some of those more rough edges on, uh, you know, for a player like me, I don't really want to get in there and deeply engage with the mode, but I want to check it out and get the rewards. And so it's, you know, it's getting a little bit closer to that. I I would still like to see some kind of event, you know, maybe like event weekend or something like double or plus 50% plunder or something or renown, at least like some kind of modifier end of game or maybe towards the end of, I want to say the season, but that's not really right. Like towards the end of Plunderstorm running, whenever that's going to be, maybe something like that just to help people top everything up. But, you know, it's just, it's been part of my daily routine lately and. I don't love that for myself, but I've, I'm coming to grips with it and, uh, you know, get a couple games in. It doesn't, I mean, the good thing is, you know, to get your, to get your quest done and kind of top out on the amount of like passive plunder you can quickly get, that only takes a few minutes per lobby. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, it's like it's a not, 10 minute, not, 10 minute to 15 minute commitment to be able to do it. So it's not too bad. Yeah. Right. Even to get like a, a handful of games in, you can do in 15 minutes, you know, if all you're trying to do is get your plunder quick. So that's, yeah. you know, it's not, it's not a huge ask, but well, I don't know. I, I still don't, I, I still don't find a mode very fun on its own merits, I guess. Mm. Yeah, I, I certainly think it's a mode that is for someone who's not looking to play World of Warcraft. Like, it, it, it isn't the same game. It's not what the game's about. That's a, a good reason, way to put it. That's, that's, yeah, that like, sums up how I feel about it, really. Yeah, yeah if, if, you're, if you're looking to play World of Warcraft, then this isn't the game mode for you because it really isn't World of Warcraft. But I'll say that uh, I've also been doing the same thing as you. I've been logging in every day, doing two to three games knocking out that quest and then going, all right, that's my dailies off my checklist done, right? It's the same sort of thing I do with Hearthstone where I'm like, hey, there's an event going on right now. I need to play two games to be able to complete the stuff for the limited time event. I'll play two Hearthstone games today. Done. That's off the list. Uh, I'm doing that currently with Helldivers 2 because I play Helldivers 2 as well. Get in, do the one quest thing, bang, it's off the list. And then I'm like, all right, so what do I want to actually spend my time doing, right? Like that's sort of the, you get through the checklist and you're like, all right, now how do I actually want to spend my time playing the game? And that's, I think, probably the largest factor for me with Thunderstorm is there's going to be times where uh, you have a really good time and you're and you're enjoying playing with your friends. And, you know, we got an announcement saying saying that this week, starting tomorrow, they're going to add a 3v3 version where there's three people, you know, there's going to be 20 squads of three people inside the place. Uh, I've only had fun in this game mode playing with other people. It's the only time I've had fun doing it. So I, I like, as I said, if the rewards weren't something that everyone needed to earn, I would almost lean towards just them committing to, we're not going to have a single player game mode for this. We're just going to have duos and trios and that's all we're going to have. But the issue is, you need to have a game mode where people who just want the rewards can do what Jason and I are doing, which is get in, grab stuff, and get out if they can't get their buddies together on a day so they can get their daily done. So and I, I suppose you could play with randoms or queue in with like a quick match kind of idea is what they could set up and, and have that going. But I still think that uh, the game mode itself is just – it's just not – what I'm looking for right now. I, I think if I was looking for something like this, I would look more towards, you know, Call of Duty kind of era or even, you know, Player Unknown Battlegrounds, which is still around, or some other games that, in my opinion, just do this more of a way that I enjoy it than this is. So, yeah, I uh, at least it's short. At least it only takes five minutes to get in and, you know, play a match and get out kind of idea. But I think that Plunderstorm in general could have a place to exist. I just think it's 
unfortunate that you have to log into World of Warcraft in order to switch over to Plunderstorm and then play it because that implies or gives the impression that you are going to play World of Warcraft when this is just a very different game uh, that you're actually playing. So uh, it just happens to use the same art assets. That's really all it comes down to is, is the art assets are like the only thing that's consistent between them. Uh, even the abilities are made up abilities that don't exist in the actual game of World of Warcraft. So yeah, it's uh, it's its own beast. As far as last week goes, though, yeah, the majority of my time was spent plunderstorming. I did a little bit of live WoW. I prepped some for Classic WoW because we have the uh, Season of Discovery Phase 3 coming out on Thursday. So I'll be hopping into that, um, hopefully playing some with Josh and them and leveling up and getting ready for the level 50 content that's out there with Sunken Temple. But outside of that, I didn't do a ton else in World of Warcraft. It, it, I didn't, like, accomplish something amazing or do a raid. I basically was like, let's do my little errands and chores and get this cleaned up and move that around. And I upgraded my computer on Friday. So my Friday and Saturday were sort of eaten up doing first inst installing stuff and figuring out what was wrong. Because that's what always happens when you build a computer is, why isn't it turning on? Well, let's try and find out why it's not turning on. Because that's, you know, important. And then... You have to install everything, do all the Windows updates, do all the reinstalls, make sure you, your UI looks good. FYI, again, I know I've said this in the past, but if you are ever going to reinstall Windows on your computer, two folders. There's two folders that you should always have backups of for your game. You go into your World of Warcraft folder. There's one folder named Interface. This one's going to vary in size based off of how many add-ons you have because it had, contains all of your add-ons and all of their settings. And the WTF folder, which is the folder that contains all of your macros, all of your choices for how your graphics are set, uh, your resolutions, your, your UI scale, all your edit mode stuff for where stuff's placed on your screen. All of that is inside, and all that for all of your characters is all inside your WTF folder. So grab those two folders, Interface and WTF, Throw those into a Dropbox or a OneDrive or a USB key or your email or wherever you want to put it. Just have those as backups. It's good to do at least once every big major WoW update. Um, I, I guess every dot, dot five or major patch, just back those two up. Because if something goes wrong <laughs> or you reinstall or something crashes or whatever happens, you can literally reinstall World of Warcraft before you even open it. Move those folders into the World of Warcraft folder and you'll suddenly have the game exactly how you remember it the last time you opened it. And it's wonderful. I kind of wonder whether or not Blizzard should actually invest in cloud basing, backing up people's, not interface, but at least WTF folders. I feel like that's something that they could look into doing just to make everyone's life easier. Like when you have a game on Steam and you close that game and you uninstall it and you pick up a new computer and five years later you open that game, it will have your saves there because they're all cloud-based. It just puts all those into a text file in the cloud and literally pulls them all down when you reinstall the game and you suddenly have all of your saves and everything still around. So I, I feel like Blizzard might want to look into that at some point for the WTF folder because it's such a nice quality of life to open up World of Warcraft and be like, oh, my UI is still there. I don't have to redo my entire UI, <laughs> which is such a chore. So uh, that was very rewarding. Yeah, server-side WTF would be awesome. Yeah. Um, Because uh, it, it, it's just kind of like modern games don't really work like that, right? Or you don't expect them to really. So yeah. that's a good thing to bring up, like especially since you were just kind of working on a project like that. Like, yeah, having backups of your, your WTF folder is um, a huge time saver and, and headache saver. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it is, it's, a little, it's a little bit of a symptom of how old I think, you know, WoW really is, is that, yeah, it's up to the user to kind of have local backups of interface settings and stuff like that so yeah I, I always keep one kind of handy although now that you mentioned it mine's a little out, outdated so i should probably uh, i should probably make a fresh copy for myself yeah i think mine was from 2021 or 2022 it was 2022 was the last time i had my backup from so i was like i better make another one of these even though i don't think my ui has changed a lot since shadowlands but i did it anyways and yeah it was nice to uh to be able to like if you if you save the interface one as well like if you do wtf and interface all your weak auras, all of like all of that is saved inside the interface folder. So if you just if you take those two, you'll have all your add-on settings, you'll have all of your um, actual WoW game settings, and they'll all be exactly the way that they were previously. So that's uh, that's the the tip of the top of the day, I guess, for how that's going. But all right, with that, let's hop into what's going on this week because we do have a bit of a show to talk about. All 
right, this week is the Legion time walking event, where the sign of the Legion buff is up, increasing reputation gains from Legion quests and combat by 50%. And of course, characters level 45 and up can access time walking versions of Black Rook Hold, Court of Stars, Darkheart Thicket, Eye of Ishara, Naltharian's Lair, and Vault of the Wardens. And completing five of these gets you a cache of normal Mirdrasil gear, as well as the dungeons drop in 428 eye level gear on the adventure track. And of course, the vendor is selling off some 411 eye level gear as well. So for people who are like, hey, I've got a character, I want to get some more gearing up going on, this is a great way to do it. If for people who are like, hey, I really wanted to uh, to finish off my Legion reputations and get my Paragon bags and everything, this is the time. Head on back to Legion. You got yourself your time walking event, getting yourself that extra reputation gains from combat and quests. That's a pretty big deal. So you can get yourself some uh, some extra Legion reputation if that's something you're wanting to do in this downtime for the live game and obviously leading into the phase three of season of discovery, if that's something you're doing, this can fill a couple of days for you. For sure. I mean, there was a lot of stuff to collect from Legion, right? I mean, the, the Paragon bags were so good. Paragon bags have only gotten worse since the Legion days. They've just sort of true. slid they down have. the They hill, literally right? have gotten worse. <laughs> since that was the pinnacle of, of Paragon yeah. bags. They were incredible. It was the first time we we saw them. We were like, "Oh, this is so cool!" And it sort of it, it really dovetailed well with the daily quest, uh, uh, world quest system that was new back then, because it just gave you a nice reward for continuing to engage with that stuff. Um, so yeah, that, that's a that's um, a, a nice bonus. You know, some of the other time walking events, it's like yeah, you have like the rep bonus, but there's no what do you, you know, yeah, I mean, you could go. I don't know, like grind uh, appropriate dungeons or daily quests or something, but. Is that is that really what you want to be doing? Maybe not. You know, world quests are are so much more user friendly, and Legion's the only time walking event that has that right now. So that is a cool way to take advantage of the event and maybe check something off your list. You know, and of course the dungeons are are great. I mean, Legion's my favorite expansion still. You know, to this day. And, and now a lot of these dungeons we've seen lately that that you know they feel pretty uh, fresh in, in our minds if we've been doing. Um, Mythic Plus, Black Rock Hold's in the pool right now, you know. Court of Stars was in recently. Dark Heart's in right now. Uh, Neltharians was in recently. Um, so, I have a sure it's not really my favorite. Vault of the Wardens is a cool dungeon, though. I really like that one. So, it's it's a fun dungeon pool. Um, and I think time walking is a great way to level up. You know, when you start getting to that top end of the leveling process, I, I like it. I like dungeon combat a lot. So, I think, I think this is a great event, you know. I probably won't be taking advantage of it just because there's no benefit for my main character. And I'm really not in a mode where, you know, I'm playing alts a lot or anything or like trying to level any, anybody up. I guess my only thing with this is now may not be a great time to really invest a lot of time in leveling a character or like, no, I shouldn't say that. I should say gearing a character, right? If you have a character that's been kind of chilling and you're like, oh, I should, I should start getting some stuff. You might want to just wait for season roll, you know, because all the stuff is going to get bumped up. It's going to be really easy to get much better gear than this. Like everything's going to go up 39 item levels or whatever, right? And so this kind of scaled content and like intro level content is going to be way more lucrative and relevant. You're actually going to be gearing it up for the season that you're going to be playing. So that's maybe the kind of math I would be doing in my own head. Like, is this worth doing right now or should I just wait, you know? Yeah, uh, I don't I don't know. It's 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 a bit of a weird time because we don't know. We know the season's close, but we don't know how close. Um, we know so it's that's, a few weeks you know. after Plunderstorm, right, is what we were told. So, yeah, we know it's right. probably five weeks or out or so, something like that. Something like that, I would think. Yeah, I would I would, yeah. I would think like early May, but I, you know, we don't we don't know for sure. And we do know yeah. it's going to be in this data. So it's not like they have to do a whole lot to, you know, roll the season because uh, it's not going to be on a separate patch, right? So, yeah. you know, I, I don't know. I, I guess that's my only thing is if you want to hop in there, that like I think there's plenty of good reasons to this week, but you may also say, eh, it's not really worth it yet because we're right at the end of season roll here. So I just thought of something, which is potentially the reason why they're choosing to end Plunderstorm just before the release of the new patch is because most likely the patch will break Plunderstorm and they don't want to have to fix it. That's my assumption of what's going to happen is maybe because <laughs> that happens well, with most games most games when they have yeah. something like this they patch one thing and you're like well guess what in plunderstorm now we drop fish as opposed to plunder and there's just piles of fish everywhere why did that happen well 
we patched World of Warcraft and something happened inside the back end. So, oh, dude, yeah. give me Murloc themed Plunderstorm. Everybody's a Murloc, a Murloc and you're Murloc. picking up piles of fish instead of piles of gold. <laughs> he's all in right. now. Now he's in. Right, now I'm, he's yeah, I'm, ba- I'm all the way back in. <laughs> Pl- Plunderstorm season two, Murloc Storm. Murloc That's, Storm. Yeah. Yeah, okay, I'm ready. <laughs> All right, uh, another thing to check out for everyone's favorite hedgehog out there, the Gotta Go Fast quest for completing a Battleground Blitz, which will award five marks of honor, some conquest, and some uh, honor as well. You can get that done. There's also the PvP brawl for Cooking Impossible, where Nomi's back, and he's going to bring you the most dangerous pots and pans in the Valley of the Four Winds. You're going to be fighting a battle inside their kitchens. Basically, uh, Nomi is going to be cooking up a meal inside each kitchen, And you're going to have the Alliance and Horde or Team A and Team B because of Mercenary Mode. You never know if they're going to be Alliance or Horde or Alliance, 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 Horde and Horde. And they're going to be fighting to be the first one to finish their dish. And they need certain ingredients. You'll be going out into the fields, collecting up ingredients, killing off animals and getting meats. And bringing them back to your pot to try and cook up that meal before the other team does. You can, however, mess with the other team. You can go over by their pot, stun them, knock them back. Uh, mess with them, kill them off, all that kind of thing. If someone's taken the, you know, yak that you wanted to kill, then you can fight them for the yak. Like that kind of thing can happen. Uh, overall, I think it's a great battle brawl. It's just in generally a lot of in general, a lot of fun. And I think it really shines in a giving a player versus player scenario an alternative objective that really spices things up. It's one of the best examples of that that WoW's done. So I certainly would encourage people to check it out. And if you get a win, you get yourself some marks of honor, conquest and honor. So do some cooking impossible if you're looking for something just for, you know, a, a fun time this week. Just queue into at least one of them and just check it out. Yeah, I agree. I think cooking impossible is awesome. It's cool because, um, yeah, there is that PVE element. And I feel like I can do stuff as in a tank spec that is a bit more um, useful to my team, more, more uh, productive. Um, and yeah, part of it is kind of playing goalie against, uh, you know, the other team's pot and all that. And th- then there's also, you know, just straight up, um, NPC element. Um, so yeah, it's, it's really fun. The theming I think is great. This is one of my favorite brawls. Um, so definitely worth a look this week if you're looking for some, you know, something different to do. And yeah, I, I mean, I kind of wish that all the, all the brawls were, were in this mode of, bringing in something different and kind of like maybe lighthearted or just silly. And, you know, I mean, they do that with a lot of them, but you know, that, that really is not just a, a twist on a, uh, you know, on a, on a familiar battleground. This, this is like its own different formula, which is why it's cool. Yeah, it certainly is cool. It's certainly worth checking out. So yeah, check it out. All right. We have Orstar the Hibernator, the big old bear that you can knock down to try and get yourself some uh, some rune bear appearances for your druid, or maybe some 441 loot. That's the rune bear in Emerald Dream. So if you want the world boss, I'm sure you're doing the world boss this week out there. Mythic Plus affixes for the week are Fortified, Incomporeal, and Sanguine, meaning non-boss enemies have 20% more health and deal increased damage. While in combat, Incomporeal beings periodically appear and attempt to weaken players. And when slain, non-boss enemies leave behind a lingering pool of ichor that heals their allies and damages players. So overall, fortified-wise, this is like an ugly week for, for trash, in my opinion. It's not terrible, but it's it's just uglier. Like, you're going to have trash that's going to be alive longer. It has a higher amount of health, which means if it steps into a sanguine pool, it's going to heal larger at a larger amount because it's the sanguine healing is based off percentage of health. So those mobs are going to take longer to die. It's more important that you have knockbacks, ways to stun them and keep them out of these pools. Now, these pools don't linger for too long, which is nice. So they will go away and not slow down your run too much. But you throw in Comporeal on top of that and you're dealing with trash for longer, which means you're more likely to see Incomporeal beings more often, which means the whole thing is just a bit more of a slog. And as Jason will, I'm sure, emphasize, you just got to be sure you're bringing the right composition to your group, right? I mean, that's really what this is about, Jason, is making sure your team is ready. Well, yeah, I mean, for sure. That's a bit, that's a big part of it this week. Uh, Incorp is not as comp dependent as Afflicted, I would say, because even if you can't like cleanse, which you can't do anyway, right? That's not what you're doing. But like, even if you don't have a cleanse, you probably have an interrupt or a stun or some other kind of like kick or soft CC, right? And the incorporeal beings are susceptible to all of those methods. It's not super efficient. You don't really want to like sit there and burn kicks and stuns on these things because you're fighting stuff that you probably more urgently want to kick and stun. (laughs) But it does work, right? Like you can do that. 
I can if there's if there's some kind of an emergency, I can bail my team out and drop a stun on something and then buy us, you know, the duration of the stun plus whatever the cast time is on the mobs thing, you know, or maybe like almost twice the mobs cast bar. Right. If I stun it late, then it's spent all that time casting, then a four second stun and then it's got to start casting again. Cool. And incorporeal, this is the first week we've seen it since the change came in with the patch where they're supposed to spawn closer to player locations. So that should help a bit with visibility and sight lines and just being able to react to these. Yeah, I mean, it's not a great affix, and it is going to happen during bosses, which stinks, even though it's, you know, uh, a non-tyrannical week. Like, it's going to just add that extra wrinkle during boss fights. I, I, overall, I think it's less odious than Afflicted because more people have tools to deal with it in some fashion. Like, hard CCs just immediately shut them down. Um, so if you have a hard CC available to your class, go ahead and take it. Um, you know, just make sure you have it you know, talented in before you get started and help your team out, you know, like whatever, whatever uptime loss you suffer from having to burn a GCD every combat or every other combat to, you know, drop a, a CC on incorporeal, it's going to be, it's going to be, uh, the difference is going to be negligible compared to if you have incorporeals going off the whole time. Right. So, um, yeah, just keep that in mind before you get started. Make sure you tell everybody, you know, in your group, like, hey, does everybody have their their CC talents on? <laughs> like, because, you know, sometimes we don't think about it. And then the, you count the thing down and you get started. And you're like, oh, I don't have my, my Incorp talents. Um, yeah. And yeah, like you mentioned, Sanguine, Sanguine does kind of suck with Fortify because each tick is that much more punishing because of the bigger health pools. But... You know, that's, um, that's a big part of the tank's job this week is to make sure that you're backing up out of stuff you know the tank is pulling stuff away dps you can help out minimize sanguine by you know nuke down the caster or the ranged auto attacker the archer whatever get on top of that thing and kill it while your tank is pulling the melee mobs away from it and then that's less healing that's going to go out the displacements and stuff are also good if you have room for them while you're setting up your your hard cc um uh, talent build this week you know if you take any kind of knocks or displacements they, they can bail you out if there's a bad sanguine situation the nice thing is as i mentioned every time it comes up lately like sanguine no longer stacks so if you kill a bunch of stuff on top of it it's not like this mob is just going to be infinity healing for 20 seconds or whatever like you can maybe still out dps it or at least prevent it from gaining health you know you can kind of just stay on it but yeah, Sanguine, Sanguine is obnoxious, but there's a lot of counterplay options for it. And overall, like, it's probably not going to hold you up that much. You know, I, I, once in a while you have those bad ones. You know, there's, you have some bad luck and the archer disengages into the Sanguine puddle and then it full heals five times over or whatever. But yeah, it'd be, it'd be on that, like, I, I think it's I think it's less obnoxious than something like the ghosts, you know, uh, it, it just doesn't it doesn't hold you in combat it just doesn't waste as much of your time when you're moving from pack to pack and hey man if you set up your your poles right then you can just kill everything behind you and move in front of it you know and you 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 won't have to worry about oh we can't pull this yet because the sanguine needs to go away or we need to be careful not to we have so much area denial we need to move this into the right place or you know something like that i don't think i've done sanguine ever bloom and that probably really sucks so have fun in there this week but uh, like, there's just so many mobs and they're all on death eligible right so that's a, there's a ton of puddles but yeah i don't know it's it's a it's definitely a mixed bag this week for sure i think i preferred this week to last week how's that for a silver lining yeah i mean it's always nice to know when there's a better week for people to sort of involve themselves and choose to commit their time sort of like the tip you were given earlier on of is this a good time to be gearing up a character? Is it worth waiting a month to see what happens as far as the next patch goes? It's, you know, we're just trying to help you guys choose how you're sculpting your gaming time into your busy lives. So yeah, that's what this comes down to. All right. Another thing we got going on is Noble Garden. It is kicked off today and it only runs this week. So this is, this is the perfect time to be recording a podcast because guess what? You get to check out Noble Garden this week and you're not missing it by a day. You get to, you get to hop in today and check it out. New this year, we got Valdraken decked out in Noble Garden festiveness. And uh, there's a, tis a Tisket, Tasket, and a Noble Garden basket. And as well as the uh, Great Egg Hunt quests that are available. And basically, you have to defend against disruptive ducks. Hey, guess what? They're back. The Furious Ducks, led by the druid Dayton Swiftplume, disrupts the Noble Garden festivities in Goldshire and Razor Hill. 
discover Dayton's hideout and scare off the disruptive ducks to start the What the Duck quest. Seek out Zinnia Brooks in Goldshire and Solnaria Fair, Fair Flame in Razor Hill. You get to also find a giant golden egg that appears in the area and drag it to Dayton's nest to summon him. If you defeat Dayton, uh, you can defeat him daily for chances at rewards. And uh, you can get yourself the lovely duckling battle pet, um, as well as the, uh, uh, what's the, oh, it's the duck disguiser toy. That's what it is. You get the duck disguiser toy um, that you can have as well from finishing the What the Duck quest. The, the lovely duckling comes from the vendor uh, for Noble Garden for Alliance and Horde. So head out to those to check those out as well. Man, Jason, what the duck, so, man? I believe the duck disguiser turns you into a duck, um, like yourself. So, um, I, what you do is you uh, d- uh, turkey shooter somebody and then duck disguiser yourself. Oh, uh, right, and then and you then can battle to the I death as birds, or like yeah, just assert your dominance because the ducks duck have dominance. such nice new models and the right. turkeys are like fifteen-year-old, you know, um, cataclysm models or something. Um, yeah, this just went live in North America, like as we've been sitting here speaking, so we yep. haven't had a chance to do this yet. But um, I- I've talked on the show many times about how Noble Garden used to be like my least favorite holiday, and it they cratered really my it up. yeah, it, it cratered my uh, my first crack at uh, Long Strange Trip. But I'm I-, I am interested to see this rework. I uh, the rewards look really cool, like yeah. a-, a big duck mount and a and there's a. There's a new flying carpet and Dude, the flying carpet. I, I, and... I have to pause on that. The flying carpet is, of course, you know, pink and teal and like it's very, very Easter colors, but it's cool. Like it is a cool looking mount. And I've, I've seen the flying carpets before. It has eggs hanging from each of the like decorated eggs hanging yeah, from right each of the, the corners. corners. Like it's cool looking, man. They 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 actually I feel like puts a lot more effort into it than I would have expected them to. Yeah, it's pretty elaborate, you know, and um. Hey, the only other like magic carpet I could think of is from uh, Legion uh, Paragon bags, right? So it's all yeah, coming, together. coming together. Um, but yeah, the duck mount is really cool, man. Like, I, I hope I get that. We'll see. Um, and I, I, any kind of toy, any kind of transformation toy is always high on my list. I think they're super fun. So I think they added some cool rewards to a you know a holiday that's been for me like very bland. Uh, so that's cool. I think Noble Garden really needed a bit of a of a refresher although with the short duration man there's a lot of pressure um i mean there's the there's the noble gardener's hearthstone that's like if you ever wanted to live out your disney princess fantasies like all the creatures of the forest uh you know rally to you while you're casting your your hearthstone that's pretty cool um and yeah i don't know there's there that's not new but i i don't i'm pretty sure i don't have that one right um i i let some of the stuff lapse over the years so i gotta check there's a, probably a bunch of stuff on my list I'm hoping, you know, there's there's daily quests and stuff. Hopefully, there's other stuff to do, and you know, maybe not. I I don't know. It seems like the duck thing is one activity, and then there's the sit and click chocolates thing. But I'm kind of hoping maybe I can get the rewards from various methods. But clicking the chocolates is a little mind numbing. I would say, you know, it's, it's just not it's not super interactive. You know, compared to what they did with um. Love is in the air where it's like, here, do these two quests on a daily basis and then buy everything you want. Perfect. Um, so right, so we'll, we'll see. I'll, I'll get in there and start doing some stuff. But, man, the the, the I'm, I'm here for the, the duck the themed ducks, uh, yeah. cosmetics. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm, I'm definitely here for the ducks as well. I will say that the one correction I have to make in, in what we said is as someone who was a tailor during Burning Crusade, that was where the original flying carpet came from. There was the tailoring craftable mount that was just for tailors. That was a flying oh, carpet okay. that you could make back then. So I understand why you didn't know it existed because you know you weren't tailoring. Well, I'm doing back a then. lot of tailoring back exactly. then. Exactly. No, yeah. Not really. Yeah. But tailoring the tailoring gear for mages back in Burning Crusade was phenomenal. It was one of the best craftable sets you could possibly have uh, that they've thrown into the game. So uh, I remember tailoring quite well back then. And yes, that's where the OG flying carpet came from. But yes, I'm glad to have seen this be developed. It, it didn't actually have like ripples in it. The OG one was just flat. It was just a flat a rectangle, rectangle that you around. flew around on. That's what it was. So yeah, it was cool because you're on a flying carpet. But yeah, it's uh, it's one of those things. All right. Moving on from uh, from that, you also have the March of the Tadpoles taking place. That's on April 5th. So if you're someone who wants to foster a baby Winterfin Murloc of Borean Tundra and help them complete their trip across the West Rift, 
this is your time to get your special painting from them or, or thank you gift from them and enjoy this experience that Jason remembers oh so fondly every year. Little Spike out there, my Murloc son. Um, it's time for him to, you know, take his trip across the West Rift. Um, yeah, this is – it's a one-day deal. You know, again, there's no, like, character power benefit or anything. But it is really fun, and there's a ton of baby Murlocs running around and babbling. Um, so this is only uh, Friday in uh, – I guess in every, in every region, right? It's just Friday local. Um so go check it out if you never did it. Like it, if you if you think Murlocs are f- cool or fun or cute or funny, then you should go do this. It doesn't take very long. Uh, the only the only bummer here is that if you've done this on a character, then you're done. You don't do the quest every year or anything. It's just oh, you already did this. Like you could talk to your Murloc child once again, and they'll give you a gift. Um, but you, yeah, you don't get the only the the questing is like it's one time story questing once per character, which. I feel like they should make them repeatable, make it a, an event quest. But um, a lot of people probably missed out on this, though. You know, with with, with the amount of churn that WoW has, and uh, you know, a, a micro holiday like this, it's a one day thing. You may have missed this. So, if you think of it Friday, uh, head out to Borean Tundra and go hang out with the baby Murlocs because it's fun. I might go just do it just just because just to see them. Yeah, I get you. I mean, just wanting to visit and see how they're doing and check in. Like, I I understand. There's a little sentimental value there. I know you still hang on to the gift that they gave you way back in the day. for. I do. I It's, in, it's still in my bank, yeah. Yep. I mean, that's why we have void storage, too, is for fun things like that that you want to tuck away. All right. Hot fixes for the week. Um, Holy Priests, they, I guess, helped you, but also hurt you. Um, they <laughs> made it so that... Uh, your light well no longer heals people that are affected by immunities like Cyclone. So holy priests who are using light well to essentially heal their friends who were being denied healing because they were cycloned inside of an arena um, is that's no longer a thing. So unfortunate for you. However, fortunate for you, they also resolved it so that light well light well no longer despawns your shadow fiend when you use it. So you know that's also good. So I think it's a win-win. Let's just you know let's just call it a win across the board. Let's get to pick one. Yeah. Listen, you're yeah. summoning way too many things. Okay, yeah. you pick one or the other. That's it. <laughs> Man, imagine totems work that way. Oh goodness. Um. <laughs> oh, that'd be really fun. Yeah. Just you have to like uh, uh, just time totem, your you have to ro- ro- rotate them. Yeah, that yeah. would uh, that'd be really engaging <laughs> gameplay. I still want my totem wagon, man. I want I want the little like wagon that you can get that follows you around that you put all your totems in. You just travel. That'd with be you. cool. See, that'd be a cool See? toy. That'd be a good toy yeah. idea. Yeah. 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 It's just, it, it may, maybe you make it only work in the outdoor world and it doesn't work inside dungeons, and then that way it's balanced. I don't know, but like that would be, you know, be funny. Still, all right. Uh, Plunder Storm. They did some hot fixes in here as well. They increased the uh, amount of uh, plunder inside of plunder piles in solo matches by fifty percent. They made it revive it. Uh, they made it so when you revive a teammate, it only takes 10 seconds down from 15. They made it so that the cooldown to be able to use your healing after you were revived and only 10 seconds down from 15. They've gone through and essentially made the game more accessible to help people get their stuff done faster, which is why Jason and I are saying, hey, it just takes you like 10 minutes a day to do your daily quest if that's what you're looking to do. I don't know if that's going to get you to cap before this ends. It should potentially but you might want to you know towards the end as jason said if they put in some sort of boost actually commit that time commit up from 10 minutes to like 40 minutes or 30 minutes and then suddenly you'll hopefully be getting there even faster um they also went through and, and did a lot of ability tuning i'll let the people who are really into plunderstorm go through and look at that because you probably already have uh, i i know people who look at it like the moment an update comes out because they did an update on like Thursday last week, Friday last week, Saturday last week, like they were working their way through. There was the big Plunderstorm tournament this past weekend. So I know they were trying to get a lot of stuff sort of squared away before that invitational happened, uh, which was, I, I have to say, I, there was, there are opinions being shared about that tournament. And I do agree with a lot of them. Um, the strangest of which was some people, it seemed get to, got to either pick their partners or were just paired very conveniently and other people were just assigned with random people and the people who were assigned with random people did not do as well as those who like got to pick their best bud who they PVP with all of the time. I'm just saying, that's just one of those things that, you know, if you're going to have a tournament for money, 
I feel like there should be some sort of even field there that you're trying to, to you know, create. But it was a good time. People seem to enjoy it. It's a, it's a work. Everything is a work uh, yeah. in 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 sports and in esports and in entertainment. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, it, was, it was highly worked. I didn't actually watch any of the tournament, but um, I did appreciate the 50% solos uh, plunder buff. Yep. I, yep. My sort of like in per game target has moved up from – you know, 500 plunder to like 800 plunder, as you might expect with that kind of an increase, right? So do yep. you start ticking off ranks quite a bit faster with that, which is awesome. You know, I, I have to be honest, when it comes to the like the combat tuning of these abilities, man, it's like I, I don't really engage in that much combat in these games. So I don't really notice much of a difference because I usually just run around and PVE and kill as many creatures as I can. And get as much plunder as I can. And then if a player finds me, I usually die in, you know, a couple of GCDs. So, <laughs> right. like, that's about it, you know. So I, I, I know that, uh, you know, obviously they've had some outliers with, like, Fey Form and Fire Whirl and stuff like that. And they've been raining those abilities in and stuff. The in-match leveling changes, I think, are, are really noticeable because you fly through the early levels and then yeah. it, it definitely, like, plateaus. Which, it which is n- yeah. It's nice, yeah. I mean, I haven't run into as many situations where I'm, like, level 5 and I'm running into, like, level 9 and 10 players. You know, I which is... That's good. I, I feel like I feel like they're getting they're really concentrating the the good parts, like the good feeling parts into the early game and trying to, you know, extend that out as much as possible. You know, the, the biggest it, thing is is not ending up, as you sort of said, towards the end of a match, if you're in the top 20 teams or top 15 teams remaining where you are level five and six and other people are level 10 and you're just literally cowering and hiding and trying to, like, find a, a spot where you can take advantage of something or you're just killing anything you can possibly find to try and get another level to just try and close that gap a bit, which I feel like, and as this is something that I know uh, Josh talked about in his sounds good, makes sense show that he does on, uh, on YouTube, um, that there's definitely the feeling of the difference between being level five and level six is too much of a leap. There needs to be less of a leap in levels. Levels are neat and it's a cool concept to have, but there shouldn't be so much of a difference between a level six and a level nine that the six is just getting stomped into the ground. Uh, there should still be a lot of like, hey, counterplay, hey, this worked out, hey, you did this well, without having to have perfect play because this level nine just does more damage than you and has substantially more health than you. Uh, so I, I do feel like they could probably reduce the, the jumps between levels, particularly at the high end. Uh, I think it would be nice to see. But... You also mentioned something else. You mentioned two other things, actually, that I wanted to, to touch on, which is Fae Form no longer has any damage reduction. This was a really big change. This used to be a 90% damage reduction. Then it was a 50% damage reduction. Now it's no damage reduction. So that was a really big shift for that ability. So people who are really relying on, on Fae Form, be sure that you're kind of changing that up because it you're going to feel it in a really big way. Uh, and then, uh, the, you know, I mean, the other thing you touched on was in fact the, the leveling stuff. So yeah, I, I think overall it's moving to a good spot. I'm curious what threes feels like. I think there's a lot of synchro- sort of synchronization of abilities and symbiotic relationships between abilities that you can take advantage of with a three V three situation. So we'll have to find out how that sort of works. There's also a lot of like someone going back for their buddy situations that can happen. There should be a lot more plunder earned. You should be getting like 50% more plunder than you were in duos. So there should be a lot uh, more plunder that you're able to earn as a team. And you can almost like lock down an area a bit better, I feel like. So it'll be it'll be curious to see how this all plays out. Um, it'll also be harder for people to get abilities at the very start of the game. So <laughs> that's going to be the other fun part is there's only so many abilities to go around. They're not increasing creature density, so there's still going to be the same amount of creatures on the map, but you and your buddies are going to, there's going to be more people concentrated in areas than there were in, you know, usually. So there'll be, you know, more abilities to sort of spread around to folks. So you gotta, gotta pay attention to that too. Overall. So when the, when okay. you have the bad drop, you should have the bad drop RNG less, right? Because there's fewer locations being dropped, but when you have it, it's going to get really dicey really, really dicey. fast yeah. right like yeah. if you have like a couple groups like if you have like three groups drop in the same space you know relatively forget it man it's gonna be just an all-out brawl but it shouldn't happen as frequently because you have you know what you only have 20 uh, drops right in a, yeah. in, in a trios game so yeah. it should it shouldn't happen very often but when it does it's gonna be kind of gnarly 
Yeah, for sure. And and it'll also be that case of if your buddy is not really paying attention and drops you in a place where there's just not a lot around, it's going to take you a long time to get your guy, your, get your characters all geared up and abilities and everything because you have to travel a distance and there's three of you now you're trying to actually equip out with things. So it sort of spreads it a bit more thin as far as that goes. So I, I think it'll be a feast or famine might happen a bit more often is sort of what you're talking about. Okay. More World of Warcraft experiences to come. This is a blog post that came out from Holly Longdale. It says, greetings, citizens of Azeroth. It's been great seeing so many players taking the plunge into Plunderstorm, and we've loved seeing all of the stories and feedback as this experience of experience, experimental event evolves. Uh, it will be exciting to see some of the community creators go uh, going head-to-head -head in duos in Plunderstorm Creator Royale on the 30th. That was this past weekend that I was talking about. This isn't the end of the things we want to try out in World of Warcraft, however, and we have more in store we can't wait to show you. Dragonflight Season 4 is en route and being tested on the PTR, and we'll have more news to share. On the next experiment, we have up our... Sorry, more to share on the next experiment we have up our sleeves. We hope those of you who are looking for PvE-focused content will enjoy what we're planning, all while we continue to press forward on developing our next World of Warcraft expansion, The War Within. We can't wait to share with you all of the many things the team has worked so hard on with gratitude and excitement for what we'll be do next, Holly Longdale. So this, in my opinion, is the vampire survivor style game that we're going to be getting that's PvE focused. That's my guess. That's that's My guess is they're going to continue branching out because that was what everyone wanted and everyone was talking about, uh, even at BlizzCon last year, was we want a game that's this style of game. And everyone, for whatever reason, expected the pirate announcement thing to be whatever that was. And then it was Plunderstorm. So I, I am guessing that we're probably getting some sort of, hey, bit more of a top-down view, uh, running around, beating stuff up, collecting different abilities, becoming more powerful, beating more things up, collecting more abilities, becoming more powerful. Uh, I think it could be really cool. Personally, I feel like it fits into StarCraft with a, a Marine against Zerg more than it fits into World of Warcraft, but it could be really neat and fun, and we'll have to find out and see how that works. So I, uh, I'll i have to wait and see what this actually is. I could be entirely wrong, but it does sound like we are getting a PvE-focused experiment coming up at some point. So look forward to it. Uh, this is really smart from Holly. Uh, I feel like they're... Overall, communications and PR have been pretty good throughout this whole Dragonflight cycle, and I think it's a great example of it. You know, they know that Plunderstorm is not going to appeal to every WoW player, right? And not nothing is going to appeal to every WoW player, yeah. right, for, for sure. And, you know, you're adding a mode that's really detached from core WoW gameplay in every imaginable way. You don't even play your own character. And, you know, obviously there's been people grousing about it. I've tried not to be, like, too much of a grump about it. I don't like the mode, and I wish we would have gotten something else, but I don't really want to ruin anybody's day over sure. it with my dumb opinion. You know what I mean? It's just not my thing. So, okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, that's it. I, I Obviously, I prefer PvE just a, as a concept. This, those are the kind of games I primarily enjoy playing um, are PvE focused. So um, we know we have something called Pandemonium coming up and mm -hmm. we've seen some weird stuff with recolors of really, really old gear have been popping up in data mining. I'm talking like tier two recolors. There's like two new recolors for all the tier two sets and stuff that are in the game data now. Uh, so who knows what those could be rewards for or, or, or how they're going to be used. Um, yeah, there was all that noise about a Vampire Survivor style mode or, or yeah. event or something. Thing. And now, see, I'd be on the complete opposite end of the spectrum from Plunderstorm with something like that. I, I love Vampire Survivors. It's one of my favorite games of this decade. It's one of the, it's the kind of game I could pick up and play at any time. I have it on PC. I have it on my phone. I have it on my Xbox. I have it on my Switch. Like I don't care. anything you put Vampire Survivors on, I will I will buy it and mm -hmm. I will play it and I will unlock stuff and I will shoot werewolves and zombies and whatever. And I, I love it. So some kind of thing that is like a WoW themed vampire survivors in some version of the wow client that gives me wow rewards dude i'd be i'd play that all day long but, you know who knows who knows what this really is but i'm just saying like that i i, I could totally 180 on my my plunderstorm poo pooing if it's something that i like right <laughs> <laughs> you give me the thing That's i like that then then absolutely Warcraft works yep. right yeah just give yep. me the thing i like and then i'm happy about it so um yep. I don't know. Obviously, they got something else weird uh, cooking for for season four and for like the tale of Dragonflight, and I, I think it's cool. I mean, 
I, we know we got to be getting War with an Alpha soon, right? Like, I mean, they say they're going to ship it this year. We're kind of hoping for like a September, October, like pre BlizzCon, if there's even a BlizzCon this year release. We got to see some kind of public testing soon, if that's going to be the case. I, uh, so, I don't know. Hope, hopefully, we get something on uh, on that regard. But one one thing that is cool with this whole process is they have given us a bunch of different stuff to do. Like whether you like it or not, you know, the, we're getting patches and updates. We're getting this weird experimental content. It's better than the game just sitting in stasis for months with nothing happening except waiting for alpha then waiting for beta and then waiting for pre-patch and then waiting for expansion you know i I think in the past maybe we've seen more raid tiers like this is two expansions in a row where we have three tiers and i feel like on some level that's not enough content for a player like me but if that helps them line up all these more interstitial updates and just have an overall broader scope of content it's probably better for more players overall so I can sort of live with the three tiers and then a season four kind of remix into, you know, an expa- a more regular expansion release schedule and also little patches full of different updates and modes and all, all these other kind of experiments or surprises or whatever. I guess I can live with that. And I, I feel like it's probably a better model overall. So I don't know. I, I, I don't have any kind of feel for what she is specifically referencing here, but... I am certainly looking for PvE-focused content, so I hope I enjoy what they're planning. <laughs> so thanks, Holly. Yeah, I, I do hope it turns out as something that people are excited for and are pumped about. I have always said, and I said this inside our Discord channel actually, ago, I want an XCOM-style game, a turn-based strategy game that is set in like any... Like I'd take, I'd take a Diablo one, I'd take a StarCraft one, I'd take a World of Warcraft one, I'd take any of those three universes. Just pick one of those three universes or pick all of them and make an XCOM style turn-based strategy game, and I am like all in. Like that is that I would live in that, <laughs> that game. It'd be, That'd be cool so too. good. Uh, um, it so just kind of veer back into Warcraft strategy game roots, not in like RTS necessarily, like traditional base building RTS. No, but yeah, no, no. But yeah. like a strategy game. Yeah, yeah. Give me, give me something where I have uh, a base or some sort of like you know, an airship that is sending out squads, and I can customize those squads as to which classes they are and abilities they have and equipment they're wearing and i can customize the equipment they're wearing i can change the color of the gear that they're wearing and i can name them different things and i can have them inside a mission trying to take out opposing opposing forces and complete objectives and there's challenges going on and you know you can in world of warcraft you'd have magic being wielded and that kind of stuff and inside a starcraft universe you'd have obviously more you know weaponized sort of systems happening depending on which race you're playing like it's there's a lot you can do with it and i just feel like that style of game is just phenomenal i just i love that that kind of thing for me it's it's totally my jam so uh i've i've been craving something new like that for a while i've sort of torn through all the ones that i had access to so i think blizzard making something like that would be amazing someday down the line if they ever do it uh all right april trading post is going on and i was right when i said last week hey there's gonna be some things that are probably going to be themed around Easter or spring of that kind, because we definitely did. Uh, They have the spring revelers, dandelion transmogs, as well as the spring revelers, lavender transmogs. So as you can, you can guess those are yellow and sort of like a a pinky purple, um, the lavender color. They also brought back the dread wake. If you're someone who did not get the one year subscription uh, dread wake mount back in BFA, you can now get it. It's a little weird because it didn't actually float on water. That was just a lot. What a lot of people complained about when they first got it, it flew over water, which seemed very strange, uh, but they did do some tweaks to it and whatnot. It's a cool mount. It's just really fun. If you haven't gotten the Dreadwake yet, it's certainly worthwhile investing 800 traders tender in to pick that up. Cause it's, it's just a cool thing, man. Like I don't know what else to say. It's just really wicked to check. I out. agree. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a modern classic in my yeah. opinion. I mean, I, you know, I I've said it a lot lately that I love the pirate aesthetic and in, in the way that they do it in, yeah. in WoW. I think it's really fun, and that's you know the hook that I have into uh, into uh, Plunderstorm like in general. But that's why I want to play it, right? If it was just I don't know, if it was if the theming wasn't like exactly what I want to collect, then I I don't know how I'd feel about it. But it happens to be, um, and then, yeah. And the Dreadwake I think was only available that way, right? Like we haven't it was never no, was that was it, how you got it, yeah. But, but was it like a separate cash shop purchase at any? point i can't remember i don't think it was um so yeah i mean i think it's a really cool mount that's that is worth worth picking up even if 
it doesn't even if it doesn't float like a boat but you want it's a i mean what what they hopefully are, will do is make it a dynamic flyer yes um yeah that'll be really cool but yeah. um because yeah, it, great, it would great. do very well with the swooping kind of nature of dynamic flight it'd be very yeah. cool to see that yeah it would be it would be awesome so uh, ho- hopefully that's on the list um yeah awesome Matt. one of my favorites to this day it's been in for a good what four or five years now maybe longer than that yeah um but yeah really really good one a, a little pricey from the tender perspective but it is it is really cool so yeah. I, I i think it's worth a look if you don't have it the uh, that that might be a freeze for those who don't have it because there's some other really good stuff in here too and if you only have a thousand tender for this month to spend you probably want the frenzied hat of the deep blue it is a stitched together like stuffed animal shark hat that you can wear which is adorable you probably want the trash. It's a must. Like a you must. have to get yeah. the front of the team. Yeah. Like this is the kind of thing that they would. Ne- I feel like the in years past and in older regimes of the game, they would never give you a thing like this that you can just wear. Right. Like this would yeah. never be like you. This could be your armor is this plushy shark hat. Like yeah. they would never do that because they were trying to keep it more serious. And I, I mean, I think there is an argument to be made on some of that stuff in some ways. You want stuff to look like Warcraft, but I think Warcraft can also be silly and you can express that in your WoW character. So I, I love it. I'm definitely uh, I'm definitely buying the Frenzied Head of the Deep Blue 100%. Mm-hmm. There's also the Trusty Treasure Trove, which is a basically a, a treasure chest you wear on your back as a backpack that you can run around with. Then there's the Dread Admiral's Bicorn, if you're looking for a pirate hat. And the Crimson Bicorn, if you're wanting to be part of the Crimson Crusades sailing fleet, you can do that. Um, or Scarlet Crusades sailing fleet. All right. The uh, weapon transmogs going on are pretty neat as well. Worth checking out. The Emerald Guardian's longbow is like a very neat serpent style bow that they have kicking around. But the big reward for the month is Aura, which is a duck pet that wears a flower for a hat, which is adorable. So... You know, you just you got to get that right. Like just ever, it's, it's duck month. It is, yeah. We're just in a whole duck. We're in a duck era right now, yeah. and I'm fine with it. I mean, we had to wait, you know, 18 years to get ducks in this game, and now we have them, and we should make the most out of it. And that's yeah, true. Is that like is a, true. Like a, yeah, it's a, it's like a, it's like a, a, a wizard duck. Like it's, it's got like a daffodil, upside down daffodil on its head. That's like a, like a wizard hat, and it's got some kind of crystal staff. Uh, so it's some kind of magical, magic wielding duck, which is wonderful. It's also got a little, like a, a cloak or like a scarf, uh, uh, tied around its neck. You know, I, I think a battle pet is not like the coolest. It's not the worst we've had for bonus rewards, but we've get, we've gotten a lot of battle pets. I think yeah. the mounts and the transmog sets are kind of cooler monthly rewards, but if you're going to give me a pet, if you get, if you give me a magical duck, like, I guess I'm not going to complain that much. So yeah, it, it is it is the first we are past reset time in in na so it's time yep. to start filling out that traveler's log for the month get your bonus and go shopping they did a, something a little bit different with the blog preview this month which is they didn't they didn't include screenshots of every item yeah there's like selected items they included so some of the stuff i'll have to go and actually look at in game because we didn't have it like when we were putting the show together so I don't know what else is really on my list, but man, the shark hat. As soon as I saw that, I'm like, okay, that like I'm I'm buying that day one, no questions asked, because uh, what a what a cool idea. I we kind of had the idea that there'd be some you know pirate theme stuff for April with plunderstorm and all that, and some of the other data mining suggested some recolors that might be available from somewhere or whatever. So yeah, some cool stuff to check out. I I, I think I, it's I like when they do these. They have like different theming you know like it's not all noble garden this month you know there's there's definitely some of that flavor there's some pirate stuff there's some other stuff that's just kind of more like dragon themed or like dragon flight looking so it's it's a nice mix i like that variety versus okay like the february one i think just leaned way too hard into love is in the air and it's like yeah yeah it's like if that's not your jam then you just there's just nothing it's i mean i I have thousands of, of tender banked, so I'm not like afraid of just banking it for a month and saying I'll use this someday. But um, yeah, I, I think having a couple different themes going on, uh, you know, within a month's inventory is the way to go. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the other things I guess I'll highlight just because they're probably worth checking is the delicate silk parasol. So if you're someone who is collecting all of the parasols, be sure that you're getting your delicate silk parasol because it's 200 tender. And uh, will go well with your collection since we've had like four or five parasols since this thing went live that people were uh, are worth checking out. So 
that's certainly up there on the list as well uh, for something to check on. And there's some there's some two handed weapons and some other weapons that might be worth checking out as well. I don't know. So we'll have to do what Jason said and log in and then go and look because and otherwise you're not going to know what else is going on. All right. The Dragonflight Season 4 PTR is available, and with it, uh, there's the new dungeon rotation for Mythic Plus that's going in. So, obviously, it's all of the uh, dra Dragonflight dungeons. So you got Algothar's Academy, Brackenhide Hollow, Halls of Infusion, Naltharius, uh, Ruby Life Pools, Azure Vault, No Code Offensive, and Uldaman Legacy of Tear. Those are all back. Uh, so there'll be one of those things where they're reward rewarding awards. The baseline Dawn of the Infinite will be more challenging and rewarding, apparently. However, it will not be included in the bi-weekly rotation. So additional details on the variety of adjustments to dungeons and their progression can be found in their previously published article, which we also have as well. Uh, yeah, but yeah, don't expect to see Dawn of the Infinite rotating through the uh, Mythic Plus pool. That's not going to be part of the pool for this. So get your uh, get your teleports for it now. Yeah. It was really what the, what the big thing there for end of season three housekeeping. Um, a couple of things with this. What exactly is the biweekly rotation? Yeah, it's not going to be included in the biweekly rotation. So my, my assumption is, we, <laughs> Jason is confused. My assumption is we're going to see probably uh, probably six dungeons and we'll see two of them rotate out is my guess is what we're going to see. So that you're more likely to get. So you think it's going to be. You, you think the pool is going to shrink, but but yeah. by so every two weeks or every twice two weeks. A week? So so no, every two weeks. So okay, I th I think it's going to be for this round of fortified and tyrannical. You have access to these six dungeons. For this round of fortified and tyrannical, you have access to those six dungeons. That's what I think is going to happen. Hmm. So people are more likely to target. It might be lower. It might be four. It might do four and four. Uh, okay. where they, and they mix up those pools. That's entirely possible because I feel like their their objective here is to keep something fresh first and foremost and also to allow people to target certain dungeons and keys easier because as soon as the pool gets smaller, people are only getting keys for that pool. So more you're more likely to get keys that you want for those particular dungeons is, is how I'm guessing they're sort of testing this. But I could be wrong. You could be right. It could be something where like... I don't know. On every Thursday... It changes for every Friday. It changes pools, <laughs> right. and it becomes a totally right. different pool of dungeons, which would be weird. I don't think that well, they, makes sense to me. They've committed two sins here. One is that yeah. they don't tell us what they're talking about, and yeah. the other one is they've used the term biweekly, which means literally two completely opposite things. It does in yeah. in modern parlance. So, like, it could mean exactly what you're saying. It could mean. The affixes rotate every other week. God, how terrible would that be? Uh, it'd be good on a on a good uh, good combo. Terrible on a bad combo. I think yeah, it's dungeons. It I think it's dungeons are rotating. I think the affixes are going to do what the affixes do. Hmm. I, yeah, I don't know. I, this I, this could just be a throwaway line that they didn't even mean this or something. Like I, you know, maybe there is no biweekly rotation. I guess we'll find out. But yeah. I'm reading this and going, what are they talking about here? What is rotating either? Twice a week or every other week. I don't know. I, I do think I do think there's something cool here about like okay, going to all eight Dragonflight dungeons being in the Keystone pool. I don't like that, um, but I understand. We haven't had a pool that encompasses all eight of these dungeons in this entire expansion, and we're now in the home stretch. And it's like okay, this is the Dragonflight content, so here are the dungeons. Um, I like the fact that Dawn of the Infinite kind of gets a second lease on life as sort of a mega dungeon, yeah. right? Like. Yeah. It's sort of it, it. It might have. I mean, there were cool rewards in there, and depending on tuning and the overall landscape, like there may be reasons to go in there and do that. You know, uh, a mega dungeon, whatever you want to call it, the mythic experience. Yeah. It's like it's like a mythic zero, but it's not really a mythic zero because it's harder than that, and it's much larger than that. But yeah, like maybe there will maybe there will be cool like worthwhile reasons to go in there and get some of those rewards because even at lower item level they might be worth acquiring or whatever i that is something they haven't really cracked before with the mega dungeon is to have it sort of have that second lease on life later in an expansion you know it's sort of just been okay it comes in and in, in a midway patch and then the next rotation it gets split up and moved into the keystone pool and then it stays there until the expansion's over 
we haven't seen it go back the other way. So I think that is kind of a cool idea. Uh, the, the Mega Dungeon thing is not something I want to do all the time, but it's fun for a couple rounds when it's fresh, you know. So maybe that'll be maybe that'll be a cool option to round out a couple pieces. I, I guess it does mean uh, if the mirror is still good, right? That trinket, like you're you're gonna have to do that a, a lot for your for whoever needs yep. those trinkets. Uh, that that might get a little obnoxious, but yeah. Yeah. No. I, and again, that bi-weekly could mean a variety of things so obviously we'll get clarity later but it could just mean hey there's a bi-weekly rotation because one week it's tyrannical and the next week it's fortified it might mean hey it's a bi-weekly rotation because we're going to have access to limited amount of dungeons for that two-week period so you can target down certain dungeons like this is an experimental season season four is their time to play when it comes to hey let's try a few things out so I, I wouldn't be surprised if it's something as dramatic as like we're turning off certain dungeons for certain weeks and going to have make the whole rotation pool much smaller so you don't have access to as many different dungeons and you can really be like, hey, I want to push, you know, uh, Algathar's Academy and it's really easy to get Algathar, uh, Algathar's Academy keys this week and tons of people have them because there's only four dungeons that we're pulling keys from uh, whenever we get ourselves keys. So that that is entirely a possibility for folks. Uh, that they might be running into something like that. So it's just worth checking out. Who knows? All right. Anyways, uh, powerful new rewards are going to be coming in. Obviously, the antique bronze bullion is the new uh, currency that you're going to be dealing with, as well as the new gear track for Awakened, for folks that are doing that. You can complete all three Awakened Dragonflight raids on normal difficulty to receive the Voyaging Wildering Dynamic Flying... Wildering? Yeah. Voyaging Wildering Dynamic Flying Mount. It feels like there should be another word. There's two ings after each other without like a finale word. So it's Voyaging Wildering Dynamic Flying Mount. Uh, you can also earn the new achievement title, The Awakened, uh, for completing the Dragon Riding Awakened Raids on Heroic Difficulty. Dedicated defenders can obtain the new Keystone Master Mount, the Infinite Arm Armoradon. God, some of the names sometimes. Once the Dragonflight Keystone Master Season 4 achievement is attained, you can get that uh, that infinite armoradon. Also, uh, those who complete the Dragonflight Awaken raids on Mythic difficulty are act get access to the path portals to the three raids. So you get yourself portals to the raid locations. Apparently they really like that portal idea, so they're spreading it out into raids now. And all three raids will drop a new tier token to exchange for new tier pieces with the appearance and bonus combinations players voted for. The legendary items will drop as usual from raids, but players who have previously obtained them can purchase a scale of awakening to upgrade their items to the season four eye levels, which is base 502 and can be upgraded further through crests and flight stones. So there you go, folks. There's your reason to have held out trying to get your ax this entire time is you at least can get an item that will let you <laughs> upgrade your axe over again. <laughs> and hopefully it won't take so long to get it because they say you can purchase them with a scale of awakenings. So hopefully the scale of awakening is a fairly c common drop for folks and they can just go and buy the upgrade thing without doing a huge quest chain drop to do so. Hopefully. Yeah, hopefully. I, I think that is how it's going to work, but I assume you're going to need the antique bronze bullion for that, um, which now... That's basically this expansion's version of Dinar, which we yes. had in yeah. Shadowlands Season 4. Now, that was three per character ever, right? And yeah. it was like, what, kill 30 raid bosses for the first one, then 20 raid bosses, yeah. then 10 raid bosses. I don't know if I used all my Dinar. I, I think I might still have Dinar on my character. <laughs> really? I, I I begrudgingly used them because I couldn't get particular drops that I wanted. I remember um, I, there was something I was holding out for that never showed up. And I, I was I like, well, I guess I'm buying it. Two dinar left or something, yeah. I definitely used nice. one of them. I definitely used one of them. Yeah, yeah well, the first one was like uh, so early on that it was yeah. like, you know, it, it kind of a no-brainer, right? Or if you, especially if you're looking for something from like Sylvanas or whatever, yeah, you know. Was like, just, I think it was just, a trinket. I think I had to buy yeah. a certain trinket, yeah. Like, yeah, just like, just buy it. Now, uh, so we don't, they don't really say right now how we're going to acquire the bullion and if there's any kind of, you know, cap like that. I think it's reasonable to assume so, be just because that's the way we've seen it before, but it's a different expansion. It's a different season, so it might have different rules. Um, I kind of hope that there is no cap on the bullion because why not just reward people for logging and continuing yeah. to do stuff? Yeah. Let me kit my character out however I want to. And, 
if I'm a if I'm a, a class that has a legendary, why are you making me use one of my limited upgrade items to upgrade this thing? I had to bust my ass to be able to get. You know, like it, it shouldn't be uh, it shouldn't be as punitive. I don't think so. We'll see how it actually turns out. Um, maybe I should actually get my Fearloth uh, completed at some point. I still haven't done it, <laughs> but like I, I again, I just have no I have no utility for the thing. I'm never going to use it, uh, and it's. It's a pain to I mean, the quest. The quest chain is pretty awful to turn it from a quest item into an axe. So I haven't done it yet, but I mean, I do like, uh, you know, I, I like what they're doing here. I, like, obviously, we're getting the big item level jump. So you're going to have, you know, a, a bunch more character power. Getting a dynamic flying wilderling is pretty cool. They're like the cat, wolf, dragon looking things from Shadowland from like Ardenweald. Um, so having a dynamic flying one of those is, is pretty sweet, even though it's not like some brand new concept of a thing to ride around on and uh, yeah i the you know the 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 armored ons for keystone master have been pretty underwhelming the, like you're giving me a ground mount in dragonflight like okay i know but, uh, i know it, it, it all, yeah it, it's just not it's it's, <laughs> it's too bad right because there's so many creatures in this game that are phenomenal artistic creatures that you'd love for people to get like i love some of the turtle mounts some of the turtle mounts are phenomenal just really cool looking mounts now, we haven't gotten the Mario t- t- turtle shell with wings that you fly around on, right? Like, that doesn't exist in this game. Maybe someday you'll get a turtle shell with wings that you can fly around on. But right now, you don't. But they're just such a cool mount, and you want to use them. But then, it's, it's like, it's not dragon riding, so it doesn't have that advantage. Yeah. It can't fly, so it doesn't have that advantage. Sure, it can swim fast on some of these mounts, but, like, how often do we run into that anymore? So, like, it, they're cool to have, but, like... When are you actually using them? I almost need like, I need a flying carpet for my turtle mount so I can get on my turtle mount, which is then on a flying carpet, which flies it around. <laughs> I don't right. know. Like, yeah. you know. Oh. Yeah, it's just, it's just like, we've always kind of had that problem where ground mounts are sort of just overtaken by flying mounts. And then yeah. in Dragonflight, obviously it was even worse because it's only the, you know, the dragon riding dynamic flight mounts that you'd really want to ride. But you know, uh, uh, whatever. I don't think I've I don't think I've mounted one of my Keystone Master mounts all expansion even to look at it. Um, I do like the fact that there's uh, like an Omni token that's going to be in all three raids. Uh, right. It would be really cool if that was the only token that dropped. I'm, I I would imagine that what they mean here is this is from end bosses of those raids. But um, you know, it, it should be pretty easy to get your team kitted out with season four tier sets and everything. So. That's great. That, that, I think that should always be an inclusion. You know, your final boss should always be dropping Omni tokens. And, you know, it, it, uh, the point The point here, I think they got there eventually with Season 4 in Shadowlands, but it took a, it took a few weeks to get out of the gate, really. But, uh, to, for me, the point for Season 4 should just be sort of a celebration of the content, like a victory lap. Let's go have fun. You know, the, there's no cutting edge. There's no Hall of Fame. There's no race. You know, there's there's some stuff tied to rating, but... Um, you know that's sort of always there with any kind of rotation it should just be more about having fun and enjoying the the game enjoying the content so um hopefully they they get there quicker in in dragonflight season four and i think a big part of that would be if bullions are either have no cap or are capped way higher than three and um you know people can actually just get whatever they want by participating in the game also i wanted to just mention one other thing here the awaken track i think is really interesting because mm. You buy the stuff on the Awaken track, and the Awaken track goes pretty much all the way up from like normal to, you know, mythic uh, quality gear. And this is smart because it prevents people from making permanently bad choices for the season, where like they bought something at low rank and then eventually ranked out of it, but now they spent a thing that they can't get back or that's yep. very punitive, you know, and they're stuck with this low item level version of the thing. And it also works the other way around too, because this way, you're not encouraging people to slam really low level stuff just for acquisition or whatever, right? Like, you can do whatever you want, and then you buy the thing at this baseline, and then you can upgrade it wherever you want it to go just from the content you're already doing. Um, it's really tough when they sort of have these systems where the correct thing to do is do a plus two over and over and over again until you get the drop, and then you know make it everyone else's problem and then you use your your valor like we saw this in shadowlands a lot right when you use your valor to upgrade the item so i, I think having a different tier should help with that a bit I, I think awakened is kind of smart and i don't know it'd be interesting to see if if they're ultimately like happy with something like that just having like a unified track 
that has these sort of built in rails where it's like, OK, you have to, you know, you have to do, you have to do this l level of content to get this up higher. You know, I, I don't know. I, I, I wonder, like, I know stuff isn't going to I'm not under the impression stuff is going to drop on the Awakened track. It seems like it's only from the bullion vendor. Um, so I, I think that's a smart way to, to do the vendor gear. I, and I wonder if, you know, I wonder if there's any thought of maybe unifying that stuff a bit more. You, you do run into the problem if everything is like that forever that, you know, of what I mentioned earlier, people just slamming low rank keys that they're trying to just do as quickly as possible for drop chances. Like you, you, you need to figure out a way to avoid that. But I like the idea of not having those those brackets on the gear, right? And I, I have a cool piece of gear I got from Heroic Raid. And because I'm participating in high level Mythic Plus or some Mythic rating that I can upgrade it, you know, and I don't need to wait for another drop, that can be really beneficial for a lot of players. So it's just balancing out that you don't you don't want to create that toxicity, right, of, of high level players doing low level content. That's that's the the tricky thing. Yeah, and you certainly don't want it well because that toxicity can get really bad. You certainly don't want to have players essentially finding the min max way to do something is to run low level content, who then ruin low level content for people who actually want to do that content because you have people who are like, I'm here, let's finish it, let's go, I'm pulling everything. And then just get angry at people uh, through the whole run mixed with people who are like, hey, I'm just trying to figure this out. And here I am learning and just doing my thing. Wanted to chill, relax day. I thought I'd do something easy. Uh, you don't want that those pools of players mixing all that often because it does create a lot of issues. All right. But uh, I will say there's a couple more things I want to highlight in this post. Um, I don't want to get too into the deep nitty gritty or recap stuff that we've already covered a few times. But uh, I will mention that ahead of the curve for players working towards a mural's feet of strength. A reminder that you'll need to achieve the head of the curve uh, for Forak the Blazing before Season 4 begins, because it'll no longer be available uh, once that kicks off. Um, they also uh, did mention a little bit inside a post about the, uh, the Hotfix post about the hard mode for Dawn of the Infinite, saying that it's going to be available, that it is currently available for testing, and that hard mode does not have a timer and rewards a hero track item. Hard mode is intended to be more challenging than a standard mythic difficulty dungeon. So that's something else that folks can check into. In the meantime, the things that they're currently working on balance wise, obviously is raising all of the dungeons that are gonna be in the pool up difficulty wise to match with where the gear is gonna be at. So there's a lot of dungeon fixes happening constantly. So if you are someone who's hopping in and doing PTR, be sure you are giving feedback about the dungeons and how they work. Uh, because it has like not only just the actual dungeons themselves being scaled, but it's the whole new track as far as how uh, Mythic difficulty goes, where, you know, Mythic Zero is now a plus five and a plus 10 is now a, you know, plus 20 from where it was previously. All that kind of stuff is happening. So we'll recap that whole change again once we get closer to the actual release of this, because we'll see if they actually tweaked it at all, but also just to remind you, and I don't want to just get into the nitty gritty of that kind of like brain math that's involved with, figuring that stuff out for folks this early ahead of when it's going to go live. So we're just not going to cover it. Yeah. We'll do that later. We'll just save it. Yeah. Plus it'll all make way more sense once you're actually out and playing it anyway. Yeah. Like we're, we can, we're closer to playing it. Yeah. I've seen so much confusion and misunderstanding about it. And I think the messaging has been kind of not super clear. So, well, you know, yeah, we'll, we'll recap it once season four actually comes out. And when you get in there and play, you're going to go, Oh, okay. Anyway, what are we yeah. doing? Yeah, exactly. Season of Discovery Phase 3 is going live this Thursday. That's right, the 4th of April. You can mark your calendar and hop in to be able to enjoy the uh, content starting at 1 p.m. Pacific times. So that's 4 p.m. Eastern. Adventurers can level from 41 to 50, earn up to 10 additional talent points, and brave new encounters in the Sunken Temple as the new 20-player raid experience on a one-week lockout, discovering new runes and abilities and more along the way. There are going to be six new runes for each class, by uh, engaging in fun new puzzles, quests, and secrets. Utilize two new gear slots available as the Helm and Bracers to apply your new runes. Um, there's going to be Nightmare Incursions, where you can take part in all new outdoor PvE event and uh, events that are going on and, and learn more about the story tie-in between the mysterious Dream Portals and the new Sunken Temple Raid. Uh, each a new item allows you to gain reputation with the new faction, the Emerald Wardens, as you progress. And players will cross into the Emerald Nightmare through these mysterious portals in four locations around the world, Ashenvale, Duskwood, Hinterlands, and Feralas. Content, uh, content is available for players who are leveling up as well as maximum level players as they unravel the storyline. 
Um, there's going to be new PvP rewards, as you'd expect. The actual raid itself is going to have eight bosses in it for uh, for Sunken Temple. Can't remember how much classic Sunken Temple had bosses wise, but I feel like it was more than that. But people just didn't do it as often. Uh, so it's eight bosses is what we're looking forward to as far as that 20 player raid goes. And players can also gain access to new class quests and uh, quest rewards within the raid dungeon. Players will also be able to rediscover Blackrock Depths, Moradon, and Zulfarak dungeons with all new loot at maximum level. As well as people who want to catch up and actually did not play a lot of Season 2, because I know there's a lot of us out there who didn't, uh, players now get the benefit of the Discoverer's Delight experience buff, which increases reputation gains by 100% all the way through level 39. And with the release of, of Phase 3, players will discover an additional 50% experience buff from 40 to 49. So helping people get to that 50 uh 50 faster it's a great time to join in and prepare for the fun of season of phase uh, season discovery phase three whether you're joining for the first time or creating a uh, creating and leveling a whole new character and you can please visit any innkeeper in the capital uh, cities to turn off or on the experience buff if that's something you're wanting to do experience it a little bit differently than everyone else all right so unpackaging this uh excited for the new raid i think a 20 person raid is the way to go and i think hopefully they carry that through to uh, level 60, uh, scaling some of the raid sizes back because I don't think 40 players is a realistic thing to ask any server to do at the moment consistently. So that makes me very happy to see them go 20. They're probably going to live with 20. Uh, we'll see how that goes as far as content goes. If it's a, a big flub, I want to see them pivot. I want to see them being willing to reduce that number to 15 or 10 uh, to try and help people actually accomplish it. I know their teams right now, because we're unwinding, obviously because this week's phase three launch, that are having trouble fielding a 10 player raid team. So, and I know that there were teams that had trouble fielding a 10 player raid team like a month and a half ago. So I, I do question like 20 players might see some mergers of teams. It might see people having to pull in a lot more pugs. If it's not a good experience, I just want to be sure they're going to pivot. And I think they'd say, yes, we'll be watching it and we'll see if we're going to pivot. So I, you know, I, I have faith in this team that they're going to do well with this whole thing. Six new runes that you find through new puzzles, quests, and secrets. I am a little skeptical of this. The number one flaw, in my opinion, with phase two was that runes, and not just runes, but the class ability books, were not things that players naturally found themselves finding. Now, the class books, you might be like, hey, those all came out of Scarlet Monastery. Yes, which meant that you had to run more than one time those wings of Scarlet Monastery and hope that the thing dropped. I have run all of the wings on Scarlet Monastery more than one time on my Druid and have not seen a book. So they are not 100% drops. If they are, then somehow they got missed multiple times, which I doubt they did. This is one of those situations where, all right, guys, it's easy to pass by these things and not know they exist. Having to farm for them like that, not exactly a great experience when it's not max level content. And if it's max level content... It means it's not a great experience for runes because players aren't getting those things to dynamically change their class early on in the experience. So phase two suffered in a big way from putting runes in places where players didn't naturally bump into them and find them. And on top of that, putting runes that you do happen to find if you did in fact look up a guide or, or go on Wowhead to try and find them that were max level required or close enough to max level required that you then didn't get an improved leveling experience. And in that case, you might as well just set my character to max level so I can check out the new stuff because that's what you want to do. So I, I think the discovery part of season of discovery is really important. So when they say discover six new runes, I hope these are things that are well-placed along the leveling track that as people are going from 40 to 50, they come across at least two runes that they're able to get that hopefully they can use for whatever spec that they're playing to make it a fun experience for those players. Cause that's what I struggled with for, for phase two. I literally leveled through questing, which was brutal <laughs> from uh, all the way up to level 40 and uh, didn't find a single rune from phase one to phase two. Didn't like not a single, I didn't stumble across a single rune in that period of time. And when I did finally actually go, Hey, you know what? I'm going to look one up because this one actually looks kind of fun and I want to try it out. It was one that required me to be level 40 to be able to kill the giant elite that it came off of. And I was like, oh, well, uh, <laughs> come on, guys. Uh, let's actually make this something that's viable for players to be able to get and, and experience. Like, just, I, I would be absolutely okay if Season Discovery was like, all right, 
in your first two levels, you will get all of your runes. I'd be fine with that. That wouldn't bother me at all. I don't think the end game experience for Season of Discovery should be run around and find all your runes. And I don't think runes in general should be something that you have to basically be a part of a uh, secret discovery discord to be a part of the discovery in them or go on wowhead and look at a guide those are that's not fun that's not discovery at all um so i i feel like they should be saying things the players go hey that's interesting this looks like it shouldn't be here and it it has or hey i got a drop and this item has quest text on it basically but it's not a quest but it seems like it's important in some way. So maybe I'll hang on to this and maybe this will make sense. And then you find out the thing that it goes with, or there's a clue on it that leads you to the thing that it goes to like that. That to me is neat and discovery and fun. I, it's not fun to be like, Hey, I hit max level. Now let me go and try and find all these runes by pulling up guides on wowhead and them walking me through how to do it. That's just, that's not exciting. So I think, I think they, they need to hit that mark really well with phase three. So I'm hoping they do as far as all that goes. Nightmare incursions. Pretty neat thing, new event, new sort of dynamic style to play the game. Um, outdoor events can be real; can be a lot of fun. They can also be, you know, uh, kind of slow and boring and take 30 minutes and you follow a tree around. But Super Bloom is its own thing. So uh, I'm hoping Nightmare Incursions are a really good time and they actually help players get geared up and feel like they're getting valuable rewards and um, make people really excited to sort of explore the content more. So that I'm looking forward to as well. I do know that they're keeping the Blood Moon event and Stranglethorn, and I know people who do a lot of Blood Moon event and Stranglethorn and find it kind of monotonous, and basically like, hey, just get a bunch of mages together and AOE stuff down, and voila, you're done. That shouldn't be a solve, so I do think they need to revisit that Blood Moon event if they are going to keep it viable through this phase. Uh, so I, I, I hope they put some attention towards that and making it a little bit, I guess, more interesting to be able to participate in i just literally haven't the, the pvp stuff in sightseeing discovery does not interest me period like not in the least i did the ashenvale thing once and i was like eh and then i was a part of the blood moon event without knowing i was because i just got ganked twice and then was like oh where do i turn this off how do i get rid of this and that just soured me on the entire thing and i just haven't gone back because yeah like it, it needs to be a fun experience and it wasn't for me then the first times i experienced it so i'm out um it's not worth my time so yeah i i feel like I hope hopefully they revisit Blood Moon and make it more dynamic for the those who are enjoying it, who have complained about it. Uh, and yeah, otherwise the experience buffs are wonderful. I think experience gained by 100% makes a lot of sense. I almost feel like it should be 150 up to 39 and then 100% up to 49 is what I actually feel like it should be because I, I think you just want players to get to the end game and experience it. You're going to have two months. That's what we get. We get like 10 weeks tops to experience a season so people want to spend that time at max level and you're releasing the raid with the lockout available in the week you release it on and you're releasing it on a Thursday, which means you have Thursday after well Thursday evening, Friday, Saturday, Sunday and Monday to hit max level and raid as a 20 player group. If you want to get a raid in that lockout, why would you do that? Why would you not just say there's no raid in the first lockout? Why would you give players the option because you know what's going to happen. People are going to get like race to the to max level as fast as they can to try and get in that extra lockout. It just doesn't make sense. So you know, either push the raid back by by raid lockout back by a week and have it not available the first week, or give people a larger experience buff so it's less of a slog and sort of a thing that people are like Ugh, going into. Like I know people who are maxing out their quest logs with completed quests so they can just turn in a bunch of quests the moment the thing goes live because they're trying to shorten that thing as much as possible. It just seems very strange. So if people aren't looking forward to the leveling experience, you should probably make it faster if they want it to be faster. And if people who want to experience the leveling thing, you have already have the option for innkeepers to turn it off. So that's where my mind goes with that. Overall, I'm looking forward to season discovery, looking forward to digging into it. I think the changes are good. I just hope they hit the mark with runes and going through the rune stuff. I hope they hit the mark with the outdoor event. And I hope that uh, the PvP stuff gets revisited because all those things will make this a much better experience than uh, Phase 2 was for me. So it could be good. Yeah, I, mean, I think the leveling is really the the big problem with this whole concept. And that's what turned me off from... I didn't play Phase 2 hardly at all. I, played, I logged in one time after I played Phase 1 that much. I really didn't want to level again. And I, I don't think I'm going to pick it up back up for Phase 3. Yeah. Um, Nobody that I was playing with is really into it at this point, which is a huge deal. And yeah, 20 player raids is completely out of reach for the group I was playing with. Right. 
I like the idea of nightmare incursions, and I think having some kind of outdoor PVE, like just kind of repeatable PVE thing to go log in and do, would have been huge and for me in phase one. I, I felt like I was wanting something like that, and I was just raid logging for the last few weeks. So that's that. That does seem kind of cool, uh, depending on what the rewards are and stuff and how it works. But um, I like I like that concept. I like that addition to season of discovery. I just I don't really know what it would take for me to get back in at this point. Now I'm uh, you know as of Thursday I'm going to be even farther behind. I have yep. so much leveling to do and nobody to play with once I get there. So I don't know. I I do think season of discovery is really cool and it's really like never too late to jump into it if you want to and if you want to you know if you're if you're group wants to play it like yeah you can do it like relatively fast i guess but i think that the you know the phases have been rolled out too fast for the casual player uh, for somebody who's just kind of dipping into sod just to check it out it's like it's way too fast for me you know i don't have time to do that much leveling and to kind of reset my character up over and over and over again that's a shame i i wish i, I kind of wish that i did i would like to to be able to do it more but I don't know. I, it's it's a shame that I, that I fell off of it so hard because I do think it's a great concept and I think it's a really cool and fun way to play WoW. But the gate is just way too fast, man. I I wanted to sit at level twenty five for much longer, and by the time it was like, oh, maybe I'll maybe I'll catch up on phase two. Now it's already over. You know what I mean? So it's it, it it's a very it, it's it's a very weird thing. I, I think it's you know it's serving the most dedicated players, which is cool. But I didn't really think that that's what it was about. You know and uh, um. I this agree. particular phase it seemed like it was really, really short. So, yeah, I mean, maybe, maybe the whole point is just to get to sixty as quickly as possible, and then we'll see. Maybe it's sixty. You know, maybe we have this kind of stasis that we're in, where there's no more leveling, but there's going to be different content and events and stuff like that. And so maybe then it'll be time to catch up because, okay, I can jump from you know end game activity to end game activity every two or three months or whatever, but I don't have that whole leveling and relearning. You know. The whole the economics of it, training skills up and setting up different rotation priorities, regearing all that like that's not happening on a huge scale every two to three months. If we're all just at level sixty all the time, like that could be really cool. So, uh, you know, I'll keep an eye on it. I I don't know if I'm out forever, but I think while we're in this level up phase of the whole experience, I I don't know, man. I might just be done. Yeah. So the thing I struggle with when I think about catching up for someone who hasn't played it, played it yet or really experienced it yet is that feeling of having to get all your runes or having to get the runes for the spec that you play. And now with the books and the books being buried in things like Scarlet Monastery, it's like, okay, now not only do I have to level up a character I'm, I'm passive, that, that passively gains me talents along the way that I'm spending points in and I'm learning new abilities and these abilities are cool and that kind of stuff. I also have to be sure I'm watching a whole bunch of online guides to be able to actually be able to then go way out of my way and in some cases spend like an hour doing a puzzle to be able to get a rune for an ability so I'm relevant in the current content. And so I, I do feel like they need a way for runes to start to be able to be purchasable from a vendor or given to players uh, at a certain point when they're far enough ahead level-wise from those runes. If I haven't found XYZ rune by the time I'm 20 levels above the content that it's from, you need to find a way to accelerate getting me that rune. And the reason why I say something like that is because of what you mentioned. The season itself is such a short thing, right? You only have so much time to commit to playing the game uh, within that season before it moves into the next phase. So at this point, if you are someone who's like, hey, I'm hopping in, I want to level up to 50, and you just sort of put your head down and you're leveling up to get to 50 because you want to catch up with your buddies to play with them, and you miss five runes that you need along the way, and now you're 50, you then have to go and look at the guides to figure out where those things are and then dedicate another 10 hours of your life, if not more, game time wise, to just trying to get those runes and finding where they are and doing them. One of the runes for me as a druid that I had to get required me to collect a, a seed item inside Moonglade and then without using any form of fast travel, travel to three other places on that continent that are all the way down to the south of the continent. So, well, and on, and on the other, so, and on the other continent. So I had to like go from Moonglade to Swamp of Soros to do something with this seed. I had a time limit to do it within. And, uh, it was something that, uh, uh, if, if I died, obviously I had to start over. If I used a, a portal, I had to start over. If I hearthstoned, I had to start over. So 
you're like, okay, if you're going to put things like this in, this is, is a neat thing for players to sort of try and do, but it is a large time commitment. And if you're like, okay, if there's three or four runes that are all on that level, you do hit that 10 to 15 hours of just collecting runes point pretty early on because of how they chose to lay this out. And that's a large time commitment. Like in, in some cases, that's probably as much time as I'm going to spend leveling from 40 to 50. So you're like, okay, like it, it and that's if I'm grinding dungeons or whatever it is. And I, I do feel like you have to respect that with players. And so I, I think that there should be a, a point where runes from previous phases are just given to players or have a, a, an equivalent way of gaining those runes um, along the way. Because at this point, there's no discovery involved in them. You're literally Googling on Wowhead how to get a rune is what the majority of players, like vast majority of players are doing. And once they actually find out what that guide is, they then just have to follow the guide, which just takes a bunch of time. So I, I do feel like they need a, a way for catch up in that case, because otherwise it is just a more daunting task. Like even for you, you're like, okay, I got zero runes from phase two. So now I've got a level from phase two to phase three, which is an even larger level, sorry, uh, from the beginning of phase two to phase three, which is an even larger level gap to, to cover. And once I get there, I then have to spend, you know, 20 hours getting all my runes. And you're like, great, that's a huge time commitment. I'm just out. I'm just checked out. I'm done. Right. Right. Like, Plus the econ commitment of training skills and sure. mount costs. So, you know what yeah. I mean? It's like that's a huge that's also a huge thing that makes you go, uh, I'm kind of out. Like, yeah. it's a shame. I wish I wasn't out. But I just uh, it, at the moment, you know, again, maybe once we're in, in phase five or whatever, we're up to level 60, then uh, maybe, you know, or I guess phase four. You know, we'll see may, because maybe at that point, then the goalposts are going to shift around a lot less, presumably. So it's like, OK, here's everything. I could take a wider view of it and maybe it's more digestible that way. Um, being on the treadmill this much is just a big turnoff for yeah. somebody who yeah. is. I, I just want to play the game casually, you know, like level up, maybe do like one raid night a week with some friends or whatever. And, you know, that's that's all I'm really looking for. But it seems out of reach for me right now without having to – first, of, I mean, I guess a big part of it too is I have to really rally the troops, you know what I mean? Or find yeah. brand new people to play with, which neither of those things sound very appealing to me. You know, I, I, part of the problem is you need sort of that critical mass of people to play with in, in a game like this. And without it, it's it's a real chore. It's really daunting. Yep, it, it can be. So hopefully this phase kicks off really well, and I hope they take the feedback and – can actually do something with it that uh, players have been giving and, and the biggest thing for me is like have runes be fun to discover in the leveling process and have a catch-up for players when it comes to runes and the, the skill books like just give them to players like you have, you have we have moved on from this content this is no longer relevant content for players once they hit a certain level point just give it to them please because or or make them accessible from a store or whatever it is uh, from an in-game shop like that that to me would be fine to be like hey I, it's going to cost you 20 gold but you can buy all of the runes that you missed from phase two perfect done here you go that's great because it's just not fun to be the person who's like all right yeah i'd, I'd love to raid with you but you know I, I still still don't have this rune yet so i can't do it yet so just give me two hours and i'll see if i can't try and get this like that's not a fun experience for people well about all. this i mean even just put in content around the outdated runes right like okay this rune is from a previous phase now there's a quest that instructs you what to go do to get it or whatever you know put more gameplay around it i, I would love that of, but like yeah like yeah. Uh, i think i think something like that would be more appealing to somebody like me who i love the concept of sod i had a great time playing it but now i don't want to get back into it because I don't want to do all this catch up and maintenance, right? Like if there was more of a gameplay focus on the acquisition for this stuff and maybe include some nice gold rewards, so I get in there and, you know, not have to worry about the, my trainer costs and all that. Like, I don't know. I mean, it's, it, I, I think the breakneck pace of, of SOD makes it really tough. You know, I, I mean, I know there's like the classic audience is, is, is a very you know, hardcore audience, like the core classic audience. And, um, if you know, they need, they need care and feeding and they need frequent updates for something like yeah. this. So I get it. And I'm just kind of out on the outside looking in, which is fine. I have to pick my lane, you know, in, in, when it comes to wow in general. And so that's the way it is, but it was, it was fun having like a, a, a month and a half or so there where I could really just play it a lot and, yeah. and really get everything out of it. That was awesome. I wish it could always be like that. I agree. I, I wish it could always be like that. I, I wish it was a, you know, a 10-hour commitment to level. And then within that 10 hours, you got all your runes and everything. And then your max level. And then you just got to casually play the thing. Like that's, 
it's I, it's always been my complaint about the Diablo three game. Whenever they would do new seasons, and you had to level a new character. The leveling part was always the slog. Once you hit max level, you can start having fun. Right. The leveling yeah. part was always the slog. Like just a lot know. of times, the seasonal gimmicks were not even in the level up. You yeah. know, so you were yeah. just playing pretty much like vanilla, like Diablo three level, like River yeah. of Souls leveling, and for hours and hours and hours. If you're doing yeah. it solo, you know, and it, uh, there are ways to to speed that up, but still, I mean, the first thing you had to do was get in and just level up for no reason, and it's like yeah. this is not. It was cool sometimes when they would have modifiers that would work during level up those were actually really fun but without something like that it's like let me just make a level 60 template you know yeah. who cares yeah and that's sort of where we're at with this of unless we're getting the runes just thrown in our faces as we level up you're not getting the modifiers that make it fun which means that you're essentially just doing the normal level up experience so we'll see anyways that's coming out thursday i'm looking forward to it we'll have to uh give you guys feedback next week on how that all went and what it felt like and uh, we'll talk to you then about it until then, we want to take a moment here to thank our patrons. They contribute a ton to our show and help us to improve on the content we create. And I'm giving a special shout out today to Alianas, Arajian, James, Kapawi, Max, Pinky, Choral, and Rager. Thank you so much for what you give, as well as what all of our patrons give. It is all appreciated and all goes towards supporting and funding the show to keep it on the air and all the news hitting your ears. You can find our Patreon over at patreon.com slash the starting zone and uh join up there and support the show we have newest patrons this week alex s and bean thank you so much for hopping in and supporting the show it means a lot to us and uh man you you guys keep the lights on so thank you patrons uh every little bit counts we appreciate it absolutely thank you patrons uh welcome aboard uh new patrons as well and thank you all patrons uh uh past and present for supporting the show over the years and you know letting us Keep the archives online and do everything yeah. we need to do to keep the show running, keep the show uh, produced at a high level, devote the time to get it recorded for you. We really appreciate it. It means a lot. It, it, it does help us, you know, get the show produced and out to you. So it, uh, we appreciate it. And, and thank you for, for chipping in with us. Yeah. All right, folks, that's going to wrap up uh, episode 625 of The Starting Zone. If you want to check out show notes for this episode or leave us a comment on the show, you can head on over to The Starting Zone podcast, the official website for The Starting Zone. Uh, it's called thestartingzone.com. And if you want to support the show another way, you can do that through your iTunes or your Apple Podcasts. Leave us those five-star reviews. We'll read them here on the show, but they do help us boost up those charts, which is really nice when we actually get those little additions thrown in there. And we read them here live on the show, and they're fun to read on the show. Another way to contact the show is you can reach out to us on Twitter or on Gmail at thestartingzone at gmail.com, or you can reach out to us in our Discord server, thestartingzone.com slash Discord. You can join in there and ask us questions and participate with uh, the community and chatting with everyone over there. You can also get your hands on some TSE gear. That's tpublic, teepublic.com slash stores slash the starting zone. And we've got shirts and mugs and stickers and stuff like that over there if you're looking for some swag. And Jason, where can folks find you on the internet? The best place to find me, as always, is over on Twitter. You can find me over there at Shieldwald, and you can also find me uh, over on uh, Blue Sky over at Jay Lucas over there. Um, you can find my video channels at twitch.tv slash Shieldwald and youtube.com slash Shieldwald. Um, they've been dormant for quite a while, but I'll, I'll probably be back streaming when Season 4 starts. I don't think I'm going to be doing any Tuesday night, you know, Amir Drasil cleanup or Plunderstorm streams. I don't see that mm. in, in my future, but um, but check out the channels. I will be streaming over there eventually. So once season four kicks off, we'll get back in there and get into it. Nice. If you're trying to find me, you can find me on Twitter at Spencer underscore Downey, over on Blue Sky at Spencer HD, on Twitch at Spencer, uh, twitch.tv slash Spencer HD, or on YouTube at youtube.com slash at Spencer HD. And with that, for Jason and myself, we want to say thanks for listening and jobs done.